So uh, one thing, just note, uh, last NANOG I did a presentation where I had a survey that was posted up on SurveyMonkey uh, regarding network operations practices and whatnot. Um, I'll send out some of those results tonight, um, all, all of them tonight. Um, so sorry about the delay if anybody was looking at that, but uh, I'll send it to the list with the URL where you can uh, download the results. Um, anyhow, um, regarding my presentation, it's uh, on BFD, bidirectional forwarding detection. Um, does it work and is it worth it? And uh, I'm Tom Scholl with uh, AT&T. Well, what is BFD? So um, obviously you can certainly Google it. You might find different responses for it. But um, basically it's bidirectional forwarding detection. Its main goal is really to provide a method to really validate um, the forwarding plane between two individual routers. And um, based upon what the result, you can have it have some sort of reaction, which could be triggering an action in a routing protocol, such as severing a BGP session or breaking an IGP adjacency. And it has two different modes it can operate in, and it has an echo mode where it can also stream packets to validate things. And I'm not going to really go into the details of how BFD works, because that's, there's already a lot of documentation there on it, and there's been previous pr uh, presentations on how it re actually works. I'm just going to really talk about the individual applications of it and uh, how it can apply to you and how you can actually use it. Um, so first question would be, why would an operator even want to use BFD, right? Because it, one of the things it can do is, well, its main purpose is that it can rapidly propagate awareness of forwarding plane failures into your signaling and routing protocols. Um, right now, um, a lot of protocols out there today, um, IGPs, BGP, whatnot, they have their own keep alive mechanisms. Um, but they don't really validate forwarding behaviors, and, and BFD um, basically does this. And um, you know, there's a distinction between you know control plane protocol versus something validating some, um, the forwarding plane. Um, one thing is that routing and signaling protocols are typically treated a little bit differently within a router. Um, they typically talk to the route processor, and if you have a forwarding uh, ASIC forwarding um, type engine, it's going to pump that traffic directly to the routing route processor where it could be handled. And it's not going to treat typically always the same as regular packets going in and out of a device, such as customer traffic that's transiting through a router. Um, and another thing is that routing, you know, routing protocols, signaling protocols don't really work always all that fast. While some of them have the knobs and the capability to operate somewhat fast, by default the timers are somewhat high and uh, they don't really work all that well if you want to detect things at sub-second um, failures um, that quickly. Um, another thing is that BFD does have the capability to be distributed within a router, so you can actually run it um, not just on a central you know, route processor itself. You can actually break it out into running in along on the same line cards that are responsible for forwarding traffic. So just a quick overview. You know, what, understanding the layers that we're talking about here, the control plane, uh, typically talking, you know, route processor to route processor communication, and the forwarding plane, we're strictly talking about what goes on in the packet forwarding engines or, you know, the line cards, basically what's doing the actual looking up um, and forwarding operations on your router. Well, some of the examples here, um, one of the things that you know, talking about is BFD in a distributed architecture. When, I, when I'm talking about that, what I'm specifically, you know, meaning in that, in that case is that, um, you have individual line cards. There's some sort of BFD agent that lives on the individual line cards themselves that are responsible for um, you know, maintaining the adjacencies. And typically on the line card, it runs a little bit slim. You have things that are responsible for downloading the FIB. Um, not very many routing protocols typically are present there. A lot of that intelligence is done on the route processor with a variety of other tasks that are going on, IGP, BGP, network management, SNMP type work, uh, Telnet, SSH. And then there typically has to be some sort of um, master BFD process that's actually coordinating working with the distributed instances of BFD. So what are some of the protocols that BFD works with and how that could actually apply to you? Um, the first one would be, in a simple case, would be with static routes. A static routes, basically, you know, you're stat you point a route at something, right? And it relies upon the next hop reachability to determine if that route is actually valid. It's very simple. It typically could rely upon a something as simple as, um, you know, link up or down, right? It's very simple. And, you know, why would you want to use BFD in this case? Well, sometimes link up or down isn't enough. Maybe the downstream device that you're going to want to talk to can't run um, an IGP or can't run BGP. And in this case, you need something simple where it's lightweight. You just want to verify that the de remote device is actually forwarding correctly. 
Um, you know, in this case, it could be used if you have customers and they don't speak BGP, you're just static routing to them, or you just have a downstream device that's just not capable of running anything better. The next one in the IGP is you have a few different options when you want to look at fast convergence with an IGP. Um, you know, OSPF and ISIS both have hooks that have been put into them years ago to allow for fast hellos. By default, the hellos on the, are, you know, operate on the order of seconds. Um, some new things have come out which allow you to run fast hellos on OSPF for ISIS adjacency. Um, and, and that works great, but the problem is, is that it runs typically at, on the routing process, route processor itself. And depending on what you're doing on that route processor, if you know, you're running BGP, you're running a lot of complex uh, regex commands, things like that, it could, could allow the IGP adjacency to basically um, be lost at that point because it, it missed a hello or something along those lines. So in that case, also, um, the IGP is also verifying that, well, the only thing you're really talking to is a route processor on the other end. It's, you know, that those packets for the IGP may not be going through the same path as, you know, forwarding ASIC that would normally look at um, individual traffic at that point. Um, the other part is, is that, you know, uh, when you do have a failure, um, BFD in this case can actually trigger the actual um, adjacency to be ripped down. The other case um, is looking at BFDs in the BGP space where you can actually run uh, BFD on an individual BGP session. Um, right now, um, BGP has its own keep alive mechanism. It, by default, 180 seconds, but you could always crank it down. There's nothing that says that you can't, but it o operates on the orders of seconds with a multiplier. Um, well, you can obviously use BFD in this case to simply you know, detect when a BGP session has gone down. Um, one issue with BGP is that, well, it runs on the route processor. So you lower your BGP timers to something, you know, sub 10 seconds. Once again, really high, um, lots of CPU utilization you can result in missing a keep live and a session goes down. Especially if you have a router, you know, with tens, 20, 30, 50 plus sessions, this could certainly be the case um, in that scenario. So in this case, you know, BFD obviously provides an alternative. It's lightweight. You can use it to pull down a BGP session when something fails. Now, there's different ways you can operate BFD, or BG, B, uh, BFD and BGP together. Um, first one is you can use it with IBGP. And, you know, why would you actually want to do that, right? Because that's within your routing domain. You have a lot of other things in your network that tell you if things are reachable or not. With um, BFD, what you could do is you could basically use it as a way to pull down that neighbor a little bit sooner, right? And uh, there's kind of, depending on what you do in your network, there, there's some scenarios where this can actually play out, okay? Where um, let's say you have a network, you have a lot of routers, each router originates its own slash 32 loopback in the IGP. Right now, if that router was to go offline, typically that slash 32 route goes off, you know, goes off the air. And a few different things can happen, typically, if you're somewhere else in the network, right? You all of a sudden, you'll see that next hop reachability, that slash 32, go offline, and your router, depending on, you know, what version, what code it's running, will do different things. For example, that slash 32 goes offline, well, some routers have, you know, their next hot reachability will say, okay, the 32 is gone, but a lot of people's network, you get that slash 32 out of a larger aggregate, right? You know, for example, you have 12 slash 8, all of a sudden that slash 32 goes off the air, well, what's the next best matching route? Well, it could be 12 slash 8 routed to null because it's your aggregate, right? According to your router, you might think, well, it's routed to null, therefore it's directly connected, it's still up. And basically, you all of a sudden, when you're running BGP, best path uh, calculations, you'll think, well, it's still up, it's still online, and you won't really know that that path is invalid until the TCP session goes down at that point, which could be some amount of time. In that case, you know, BFD can at least, you know, pick up, realize that the session's gone down, tear down the session, and force that router to realize that, hey, it's off the air, the path is gone, I have to recalculate and find a new um, uh, destin path for that destination. So it can be used in that scenario, although, you know, when you're running an IBGP, typically, you know, BFD implementations that are out there um, have to run that on the route processor itself. So there is a trade-off. It has to run in a centralized fashion, but you do have the ability to tear down sessions a little bit faster. The other example, which is probably a more popular one that has been deployed, although not very widespread, but it's pretty easy to do, is running a BFD in the eBGP instance. And right now, obviously, the BGP uh, timers, we kind of know how you, you can crank them down as much as you can, but it's on the order of seconds. And, well, BFD is really good in, in a 
a few different scenarios. And one of them is, let's say you're pairing on a public exchange, you have multiple neighbors, you know, you have a switch or multiple switches between you and the other neighbor. How are you going to find out when their link goes down, right? When they're several hops away? There's no way to really tell you that. So BFD can kind of come in there, realize that something's actually failed somewhere in the intermediate path, and then pull down the session at that point.